I'm Carrie Hurth, and I'm an artist here to talk to you about creating visual music. On the screen behind me is a photo of one of my paintings. It's one foot by four foot, and it's made of dry pastel on canvas. It's a visual representation of the first prelude in Chopin's Opus 28 for piano. The next image is a representation of an Irish fiddle tune trip to Sligo. Essentially, I paint what I experience when I hear a particular piece of music. My paintings are based on my personal experience of relatively consistent natural associations of musical harmonies and color. The kind of experience I'm talking about is often called synesthetic experience. That is, the blending of sensory information so that a perception of one kind, like sound, for example, happens along with the experience of another, like color. This is the C major prelude from the Well-Tempered Clavier, Book One. My paintings reflect my synesthetic experience by tracking the progress of a piece as it's performed. Technically, they're intended to be read from left to right, with the color of the lines representing the changes in harmony and the width of the lines representing when those changes occur. This is the short A major prelude from Opus 28. I've made what you might call a map of my strongest color associations as a way of explaining the consistency of my experience. The chords on the left usually appear as the colors on the right. For example, you can see that D major is yellow and E major is a pale yellowish green. Some harmonies have very similar colors, others have no color at all. Perhaps due to the fact that I understood music notation very early, my experience of sound and color comes together when I look at written music. I can hear the music in my head when I look at the score, so the process of sketching a composition is automatic. Even with a very detailed sketch like this one, I cannot reverse the process and play a piece of music by looking at a completed painting. I record the harmonies of the music in the painting, not the specific pitches. You might think of it like trying to describe in words something that's very significant or beautiful to you. Also, I do not usually hear music when I see colors. It has happened, though. A friend of mine, who's a photographer, took a photo of the corona of a neon light fixture. The surface of the fixture looked like music does before I paint it. I made a painting of the fixture. I haven't always painted music. I can copy things well enough for forgery, and I can render what I see around me. This is a copy of a print that hung on the wall in my parents' home when I was young. I wanted it for sentimental reasons, so I made one freehand with charcoal and carbon pencil. I always wondered how you could trick someone else by making them think that lines were a barn. This is a rendering of Parkade Center in Columbia commissioned earlier this year. I used watercolor, ink, black and white charcoal. The hand-eye coordination that I've developed in realistic work has made it easier to paint what I see in my head when I hear music. <coughs> The idea to paint music generally, as opposed to other subject matter, came to me in an indirect way. About three years ago, my husband moved into a new office, and there was a long, low, horizontal space below the cabinets on the wall. I told him I was going to paint him something to hang there. I thought about what would fit, and I decided to paint a Bach prelude from the well-tempered clavier as a long strip of color meant to be read from left to right like music only with colors, not chords as notation. I bought a long roll of paper. He saw the painting on the wall at home as I was working on it and asked me what I was doing. I told him that I was just painting the color of the music. I did not realize that my experience of music was so distinct. After I made that painting though, the unity of experience, purpose I experienced has led me to make many more. As my skill in thinking as an artist has developed, I've been able to manipulate colors while still preserving the structure of a composition. This has allowed me to have more control over the emotional qualities of a painting. These are three verses of the same song. I've also found that considering the way colors are displayed in nature helps me create a painting that has not only a meaningful pattern, but also, like a performance, 
has a sense of time and place outside the natural rhythms created by the music. This painting contains the colors of a sunset, but the structure of a hymn. Sharing my process of creating visual music has become essential to my paintings because I learned the personal and cultural associations that others have with color and the images and associations that music generates for them. For example, some people feel that red is forceful or passionate, while I find it pure. Due to the fact that my pairings of harmony and color occur at the level of perception and are not based on the way I feel about music, interaction with others makes my perceptions more meaningful and I make better choices when I paint. This painting references a salt flat photographed by Murray Fredericks. You might have seen it in National Geographic a few months ago. Even so, I find that I appreciate the abstract qualities of music and color as the most direct way to express thoughts and emotions. I can read them as a language, and they seem to tell me about where a particular piece of music comes from and what it means. Jeremy Strick, the author of a great book on visual music, has said that the point of creating it is that by relating normally unrelated experiences, a person can go beyond metaphor and transport one from ordinary experience into the realm of art or poetic truth. The intensity and complexity of even the most mundane human experience defies explanation and expression. Simple scratches or dots of pigment transport us all in some way or another. It's the identification of structures or patterns in our experience that lets us listen to each other. Thank you very much.